Ostara. Some very long time ago, on the Slavic lands, this festivity on the day of the spring equinox was considered to be the true New Year. Not the 1st of January as it is now, not the 1st of September as it was not too long ago, but precisely March 21st. Actually, this year the astronomical spring came yesterday. But as for the swaying of the water element, since water is very inert, it will always run a little late. So this is why we are meeting today. And due to this reason, it is customary that the spring equinox is tied to March 21st, even if it might start a day earlier or a day later. We will remember that this whole process has already started and that it will catch up to our consciousness around this time, similarly to a wave that went away and is now coming back. And today we will be catching this wave. We will be feeling it today. The day of the spring equinox is known in all cults and it has always been dedicated to the birth of the goddess. We remember that at our last lecture we said that all of our eight marker points, in one way or another, are tied to the mother goddess symbolism. At our last lecture on Imbolc, we spoke about the triune goddess Bridget, her triune nature, her three faces, that of maiden, a mother and crone, as well as in any other forms that she was seen by people, by priests, by Volks or Druids. It is this force, these images that come to us on Ostara. During Imbolc, the goddess is not yet awake, but the air is here, the information is here. It let us know what will happen once she awakes. And in the olden days, it were the Meiji, sages, priests, volks, who used to receive this information. And today, with the awakening of water, this information can be caught by the rest of people as well. Water awakes, and so does the goddess. She is still a young girl, and so was her image of a young girl who just woke up from the winter sleep, or who just got born. It is precisely the goddess' birthday that was celebrated in many traditions. And until this day, in the Eastern cultures, such as the Persian, Sumerian cultures, and the cultures of the Assyro-Babylonian priestship, this day was dedicated to the goddess Ishtar as the day of her birth. And on Slavic land, Slavic territory, this day, based on Celtic tradition, was dedicated to the goddess of dawn, goddess of the morning, Ostara or Iostri. Many copies, we should mention, are broken related to the etymology as well as generally to the origins of this goddess. And it is actively being tried to prove that it is a remake and that there never used to be such a goddess at all, and that all of it was made up by Churchill in the year 1918, meaning that it was made up by Wicca, meaning gardener, who made up this whole system, and that in actuality there hasn't been any historical evidence found proving the existence of this goddess. But the pagan tradition, as we know, it leans on the opinions of scientists only here and there. Well, yes, it is of course very interesting what they will unearth, but we very well know for ourselves what used to be and what wasn't. Magical history is slightly different from human history. And our history tells us that this festivity always used to be dedicated to the awakening of the young goddess by the name of Eos, goddess of the dawn, Ostara or Eostri. They called her Lada in the Slavic tradition. I think that this name is known by many. The young Lada, young maiden, it is her birthday as well. And in this youth, in this incandescence, in this joy, she is as the ever-renewing nature, forever beautiful, no matter what image she happens to take on, whether she appears in fury or tenderness, she always is the most beautiful. 
And this is the power of paganism. Ancient Celts revered a god and a goddess, the mother and the father, but not for people, the mother and the father for all of eternity, for everything that gets born, for everything that exists. And so this young hypostasis, when everything awakens and nothing is known, and everything is wanted, as if in one's childhood, in one's youth, it is a period of love, a period of simple desires. It is precisely this state that comes to us with the awakening of the water element.